man, what a hectic day. Just, just trying to accept that this is happening because this is like, it's too early. It's too early. It just sucks, man. I'm just talking quietly because it's chilling out, you know. Oh, just so bummed. Bummed, man. We had a week, man. We we're gonna go to Byron. Just had everything planned. We literally just cancelled everything. Just fully cancelled it. Like I'm hoping we can even get into third gear so we can. Because the plan was to get it to Orange or something and then get it transported. But no. Nah. Like I need to finish this journey my way. It just sucks, man. I can't believe they just snap like that. It's not an off running bike. A street scrambler is not built for that sort of stuff. It's, it's, a, it's a street bike. It looks nice, it's a pretty bike, it's a pretty boy's bike. Like the light off roading, but nothing that we went through. Like that was just full blown. Like you want to be on something that can handle that sort of crap, you know. But I was up for the challenge. I was just like, yeah man, come on, we got this, we got this. But I didn't have it, I didn't have it at all. You know, you gotta try these things. Like, you know, in a way I do regret it, but I know if the opportunity came again, I'd be like, let's go. And it's an experience, man, the experience of this all now, and just trying to, it just sucks that it happened this early. That's what blows. I feel bad for Nick, I feel bad for all the brands and stuff, because um, they've been amazing. OSAR dry packs, I don't know if I showed you guys. Anyway, I wore a hole through my pack. Um, straight away, they were just like, I'll send you guys another one for when you're in Byron. So they've already shipped that. Even with all the rain that we had yesterday, nothing was wet at all. It was just bone dry. They're sick, they're absolutely sick. They clamped down to the bike really well, they tie down really well. I'm gonna do a full review on that. Yeah, steady lights, literally the sun. There's another car coming, one second. <laughs> literally the sun, full sight helmets, awesome. Like they've, you know, they've been there all the time. If you have an issue or anything like that with connecting, they just fix it, man. They fix it so fast, had app updates on the flight, which was sick. Louis Moto, man. Yeah, the seat gel insert. If there was one part of me that wasn't sore, it was my butt, which is crazy. Like, I mean, I feel like after a four hour ride with Louis Moto, I felt like I went for a normal one hour ride. So if you want some comfort, the motos give you help as well. They definitely helped. Anyway, so we're gonna have some lunch uh, and then <laughs> get up early tomorrow morning. And um, that way we go, man. Hopefully we get in there. <laughs> it's still gonna be a day tomorrow. It's still gonna be such a day. We've got an hour and a half of riding straight up, doing 70 kilometers an hour. Yeah, crazy. All right, so we can see a little clear, clearer now. So that's the, that's the old issue. It just moves so freely. The center shaft is spinning with it. It's not like it's sheared off or anything, it's just actually inside. I'm gonna try to remove this. Um, just grab, I put some tools in, thank goodness. Grab this, try to just shift it up into third. If we can get it to third gear, we're good to go. I'll just ride third gear for the rest of the trip. And obviously like, didn't, like the headlights, the lights and all that, they're all, it's all just all cosmetic. I can easily readjust those, same as the quad lock. That's fine, everything's fine. It's just this. If we get this done, we're on the move, baby. Um, if I can't get it to click in, rocking it back and forward and everything, then the clutch cover is going to have to come off, which is going to be a, a mofo of a job. Shout out to Porton High, man. Look at this tool rod. Look at this. Brought this in. I just I gave it a wash, man. It's caked full of clay. Uh, spanners and stuff in there. I had, had other stuff in here, but I might just leave that for now. Um, but yeah, look at that. This thing's going to last a lifetime. I just took a beating in the last couple of days. The whole trip really just sitting right there. Um, but yeah, shout out to Port and Hyde, check them out. Links are in the description. They're, they're quality, quality, quality stuff, and they look sick. They do all different color internals. You can choose the color of your leather, choose your, just choose your everything really. Uh, thanks again, Port and Hyde. You guys are legends. Thank you. Look at that. Port and Hyde. Alrighty, so update. Uh, we tried doing the rocking thing, we tried to spin it back and forth, it just literally free spins completely, so it snapped. I don't have a socket for this, um, so I just undid everything and swung it forward. Bash plate's off. Next thing to do is to lay the bike completely on its side, just dunk on the ground. I'm going to do it over there on the soft mulch. Take the clutch cover off and then put the, put the lever back on, spin the tyre and just hopefully get into third gear. As soon as it's in third gear, to put it all back together, we still need to find some sealant and we've got to be careful not to tear the gasket as much as possible. <sighs> We're so lucky, man. These the 
people that own this joint have helped us out so much. Um, and they're cool with us to work it, work with it here. We're under shade, there's beers, man, there's a pool. Um, so I don't give Google reviews to anyone, but I will make a Google account to give these guys yeah. five stars, man. Yeah. Far out. Just awesome service and they're like interested in us, you know what I mean? They're not just like, get out of here. Uh, all right, so we're gonna do that and um, you know, these ones. All right, so we tried the lever thing. I'm on the beers already. Much needed beer. Yeah, on the side. Now the idea of this is to let all the oil drain to the other side. Then you get some WD-40, spray right around, soak up the, the gasket a little bit to try not to tear it as much as possible. We're gonna get some gasket sealer. We're gonna pull this off. We're gonna stick the the clutch, uh, the uh, gear selector back on and um, and then turn the, turn the rear tire. See if we can get it into third. As soon as it clicks into third, chuck everything back together. And we're good to go. Um, so yeah, we're okay. We just gotta, gotta get this going, man, and we'll be we'll be well on our way tomorrow morning. Oh, that's the plan. Helmets are on charge. We're, we're feeling good about this. We're feeling good. Let's do this. Okay, so we pulled the clutch cover off. We've just been on the phone to bloody everyone we know that works on this stuff, including the what the head technician at Triumph Sydney. So to be able to change it into third, we need to pull the clutch plates out the clutch basket off. To be able to do that, once you get the clutch plates off, there's a massive nut, apparently that's super tight. So we need to work out how to get that nut off. Shift it into third, and then literally put it all back together with Loctite, swing off the nut, we don't have any torque wrenches or anything, and then literally hope for the best. So I feel like right now, while it's 2.30 in the afternoon, the hardware's still open. I'm gonna give it a crack. I'm gonna take the bolts out of the clutch clutch plates out, have a look at this nut, and then try to, the hardest thing's gonna be cracking it because the wheel's gonna be wanting to turn. Shit. Yeah. That's where we're at. Walk Let's right. do it, let's do it. Some gasket sealer, WD-40, and most importantly, beers. How you get us through? Man, we just went through the most gnarly thing. Like just, Getting those beers, it's all glassed up. It's all just ridiculously secure. And I was asking the dude, I was just like, man, like, I've never seen this before, what's, the, what's up? He's like, man, if this wasn't here, we wouldn't have any stock. That's how bad crime is in Burke, man. Like, like that big Fort Knox gate just always stays closed. Everything's on lockdown. Every glass door, every door has roll up shutters for when they you know, close up at night. Crime's huge, all the locals are just like, it's, it's ridiculous, it's ridiculous. Drugs, alcohol, all fuel it, um, which is super sad. It's a nice, it's a, it's a beautiful place, there's really friendly people around. And it's just, it's just such a shame to see all this sort of stuff go down. It just makes me want to get my bike <laughs> up and ready, so we can get the hell out of here tomorrow morning. Just crack it, third year, bah, for the rest of the trip. Um, all right, so I've got some work to do. I will uh, touch base with you very soon. <laughs> Wish me luck. We've tried so many options with the bar on it. It just spins, man. It spins so easily. There's no way to tie it down. I tried strapping it up and everything, but I just can't crack this nut. It's so damn tight. I just don't have anywhere near the leverage, the leverage that I need to be able to crack it. So it's not to go down. I really thought we would have had this, man. I really thought we would have had it. Can't do anything. One little, one little tip, man. Literally researched this so much, asked everyone we know, head triumph service, like everyone, like so many people. And there's just, all we can do is get them to third gear. If we take it to another shop that's 150 k's away, it takes us three hours to get there at my speed. See if they can rattle that off, put it into third, dump the oil. Or just get a truck and I can take it straight back to Sydney and then I just catch the train home, Nick rides home. It's a miserable, depressing time. Everyone's been so awesome here, trying to just work this out. We've been lucky, considering it wasn't stuck in neutral when we were in the middle of nowhere with no reception. Um, we've been, yeah, we've been pretty damn lucky. We put it all together. Bike's ready to rock and roll. 
clutch case back on. It's not leaking any oil, which is sick. We've got the steady lights back on each side. Fix the podlock up again, so she's back and rolling. Um, this is all hanging off as well. This cable tied that back up. Whatever. What else? What else? What else? What else? What else? I think that's, I don't know, I think that's pretty much it. It's back up to, it's back up to riding capabilities, just stuck in second gear. So now the new plan is this. We're going to be waking up at like 5 or 5.30. We need to be out of here by 6. We're going to be riding back down to where we came from, past that damn dirt road. We're going to be meeting up with Clyde? Claude. Claude? We're going to be meeting, meeting up with Claude from... M and C Pasici Motorcycles. Shout out to those guys because they've been absolutely killer with their assistance with this sort of stuff as well. As well as the, uh, the hotel owners here, as well as all the locals, man. The local parts shops, I was running down here with all these sockets, just trying to find the right size. They were just like, just take it, take what you need and then just pay for what you use. The bike's back together. We're just gonna have a beer. Uh, I'm gonna call it here for the day. We're, uh, we're gonna get it back down to the Cobar. We're gonna try to get in third gear still. And then it's just, Straight home, we might camp out in the mountains, so there's still just a little bit of adventure, but yeah. It sucks. I just can't believe this this has happened. Um, but we're still just gonna make the most of it because we're here and um, you know there's there's nowhere else I'd rather be. So we just rocked up to Parisi Motorcycles, back where we bought all the armor and everything. So stoked. Finally, we're out of Burke, out of the danger zone. So hopefully we get this into third or fourth gear um, and then we, we'll be on our way by, you know, in a couple of hours, which is amazing. Uh, we'll camp out tonight, hopefully somewhere nice, maybe even tomorrow night again, maybe somewhere the next night. We'll just take our time, just cruise back home nice and slow, see what happens. Feeling good though, feeling good. I think we're gonna get a pie. It's time for a pie. Good beer. Oh, Claude called. Uh, Mr. Claude. Hey, tell me. Yep. Where is um, the gear stick? Oh, shite. Uh, where, where is it, Rob? It's in a black bag within the big bag. Yeah, you might have to come down and pull it out for him. Yeah, sure, easy. I'll come down now. Right. Right now. If they, if, if Claude just fixed the bike and we have all yours, we're, we're going to Byron. We're going to Byron. We're going to Byron. From here. All right, we go. Turn it. So, might have the gear lever fixed. Holy crap. So, the boys could be back on. They literally welded up. It's like something sheared off, so they just welded it back together. They're grinding it all now. Um, and they're, gonna, they're trying to get us, they're trying to get me all my gears back. How insane is that? So now from here, we have to pin it <laughs> to Byron. Uh, we're just working out a, a route now. But hopefully, man. Oh, it's crazy. I can't, I can't believe it. I actually can't believe it. I thought, I thought that was it. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Parisi Motors, man. If you're in Cobar, if you're heading to Burke, if you're in the middle of New South Wales, hit these guys up. They're decked out. They have all your adventure stuff. What's that? Booyah! Parisi Motor, baby. How good is that? Jesus Christ, you were good looking. Scary. What happened to you? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> well, the drought coming. You know, you, know the, you know the cows out here in the drought? Yeah. Was that dry, they were given powdered milk. Oh, serious? <laughs> no, we bastard. <laughs> so right now, if this all goes ahead, we have a seven hour ride to Urella. We're going to be hanging out with John, who's the founder of Ural Australia. We're going to be hanging out on his property. Um, I did a shoot for them a couple of months ago. Um, incredible property. Urella is beautiful. Uh, you'll dig it, but seven hours away, the time is now 11.22 a.m. Uh, so we need to get going if we want to make it there before sunset. I'm just like, man, the anticipation is killing. Like actually, we're just like, I'm literally just pacing around. Just like, man, is it going to be on or is it going to be off? Am I going to be limping home or are we going to be <laughs> riding towards Byron? Continuing the trip. Uh, I don't know. It's hectic. It's so hectic. <laughs> man. Ah! Had this old lady last night. 
like we just at the bar ordering our food and stuff. And she's, she just sits down. She's got like a bottle of wine next to her, just knocking them back. She's just so maggot, and she's just like, "Oh, you boys staying another night, are ya?" I was like, yeah, "Yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool." She's like, "Oh, welcome, welcome." And she asks about the bikes and stuff, and then out of nowhere, Nick turns around, just facing the bar again. She's just like, "Well, maybe you can take me for a ride." Ah. And I was just like, "Fucking what?" And I was just looking at her like. I wasn't sure if she was just like like joking or anything, but she was full on just uh. So I went there. <laughs> <laughs> so hectic though, man. And then we're just eating dinner and then she's just like talking about her husband issues and then she's just like, but these boys in front of me. That what? One, that one. Did you hear this? I don't hear that. Oh. Truck. So she was she was sitting behind me. Nick was facing her, I had my back towards her because I was like, fuck that. It just she just grossed yeah, me welcome. out. I did that for you too. Yeah. Well, even if you sat that way, I would have sat next to you facing the other way. There's no way in the world I was facing her. Yeah, and then she's like talking about her husband and stuff. She's like, she's, but she's like, oh, but these boys here, she's like, I'd have that one and then I'd have that one after. And I was just like, are you serious? Like, no, no, whatever. Like, hey, legit. Legit. I can hear it. They've cranked it up. Ah. 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 My heart's racing as fast as that's chugging. Let's turn it back off. Oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. Oh, back on the bench. Back on the bench. Oh no. Crap. Fire. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Back out to it continues, baby! The trip wasn't over. I even said it my last post last night. The trip isn't over. Staying strong. Even in data. Welcome to central New South Wales. No longer in the outback. We're in the central. Just had a first survey break. Man, <clears throat> it's pretty sleepy. Running off three hours sleep. This is a big one. It's a big stint. Five and a half hours to go. It's a big boy. Red, red light. Oh, that was a close one. That was a close one. I heard the tweet of the bird. I heard the tweet. How oh, good. Yeah. We're like, we're fully out of the desert, out of the whole outback Australia into the central Australia. Great dividing range where uh, I'm heading towards Tamworth now. Next stop will be Tamworth. Um, and then after that is Eurella. So we still got three and a half hours to go. But man, we are making time. Oh, not so much making time. We've got, we're going to get there at 8.30. <laughs> it's going to be pretty dark setting up tonight, uh, but we'll make it. Be good. Roll on, roll on, roll. How good is this, man? What? It looks as hook. Nice, boys. Nice. It's chugging up this hill. Beautiful, man. Temperature's cooling down. No more goats. <laughs> Name on massive insects, just like little butterflies. Like you see the um, the white powdery stuff. I try to dodge them, hey. I fully like move out of the way from them. He goes, sorry, buddy. Oh, like, and I almost clipped that bird before. That was pretty gnarly. Bloody birds. And my ears just popped for the first time in a while. Uh, looks nice seeing some bloody mountains, hey. That flat desert is a thing. Temperature is like dropping. It is actually so pleasant right now. Like we're definitely through the hard yards now. This is all just like, it's gonna get greener and more hilly and more sexy. <laughs> so good. We're out of that dry heat. Mega sun, no clouds. 
That sort of vibe is done, baby. We got through the thick of it. Anyway, enjoy. It's unstaked. The sun's setting nicely. Just gotta be careful. So we still got two hours fifteen to go. We're gonna be rocking up at eight thirty-four, so it's gonna be pretty damn dark. So we have to watch out for kangaroos and everything still. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be setting up camp in the dark, one hundred percent. Can we hit this bitumen real fresh? Grab all loose in the middle still. Man, my legs got absolutely annihilated. Glad I got the boots on. But far out, all up here. Just like massive stones, just cracked. I just heard it all just like smashing the bike. Even when the truck went past, it just threw some up at me. Far out, man, that was hectic. Wowzers. We got some bloody bruises coming. Cracked my shins. Right above the boot, this Woo! That was a thing. Big chunky boys, you know? Like big, big rocks, tar, just picking up. Yucky. Ah! Alrighty, so change of plans. We're heading to a campground called Bundamir or something because we're not going to make it in time to John's place. We'll be setting up the dark and this Bundamir place is uh, a campground that's about half an hour earlier. So we'll be, we'll be having, a, we'll get a little bit of light at least and we can sort of just, you know, relax, set up and chill out, baby. Uh, so we just filled up for the last time today. Ah! Nice. Oh, shiza. What's going on here, okay? Man, traffic. Not used to it. What a, an amazing, amazing night. So yeah, like an hour and 20 minutes. How good's that? Smash it out. And that's us for seven hours done. For seven and a bit because of this morning. For eight hours. Eight hours riding today. Insane. Insane. What an adventure so far. This trip's been absolutely insane. I've already grown so much from it. And at this point, I was feeling immense gratitude to everybody. To my riding partner, to all the brands, to Parisi Motorcycles. I just can't believe that they got this going for me, for us. The trip was able to go on because of them. So again, thank you times a thousand to Breezy Motorcycles. Thank you to all the people from all over the world that messaged us during this time. Your support was so very, very well received. We couldn't have done this without you guys. We couldn't have done it from the support of our family, from all the people involved, all the random locals. It was just such a special couple of days. As stressful as it was, I'm glad it happened now in hindsight because this is what adventure is all about. It's about overcoming and growing from your situation, from your mistakes. I knew this trip deep down was not over. I knew it. And now here we are. Day 8, riding the sunset and continuing our 14 day, 5,000 kilometer adventure. Alrighty, we made it. 7 hours man. 7 hours of power. You can't see much. But um, we got Osa's little camper cooker thing going on here. Perhaps little kettle, boiling water. We've got our, we've got our food here. This is the vibe man. This is an absolute vibe. Bikes are behind us. With the, uh, with the tent set up, we rocked up at night. It was just like chaos. Bug situation it was intense. Um, but yeah, this is it, man. 
I hate you so much. <laughs> Like, oh, my cornering is off. Far out. Oh, I'm slugging all over the place here. Alright. Oh, it's time to get serious. Pizer's up. Sloppy downshift at the first. Far out. I feel like I'm a rookie all over again. Rob's taking me to school here. Oh, bikes just eat me alive. I gotta get out of the first. Alright, I'm just gonna chill in a second. Heavy on the front brakes. Far out. These roads are mental. 